Greetings, greetings, greetings. Today is Saturday, April 16th, 2022. This is a weaponized logic regarding when things don't add up. So, you know, these are 10 minutes roundabout, so we're gonna be extremely brief, talk quick, but with full understanding, feel free, and we're just gonna jump straight into it. Read this for yourself, read the entire chapter for yourself, read all the context for yourself. I'm gonna go ahead right now and give you a brief rundown. So we're in the book of uh, whoever it is that wrote Matthew, uh, according to whoever it is that wrote Matthew, the Gospel of, um, Matthew 1. Uh, so in Matthew 1, we have Joseph being espoused to Mary. He finds out that she was pregnant before they came together, AKA got busy. Uh, he didn't want to put her away publicly, being a just man and all. And so at this point now, the uh, angel or the malak who uh, comes and speaks to Joseph um, uh, is Gabriel, we find out in Luke. What's interesting to note here is they don't mark uh, uh, Matthew and Luke whoever it is that wrote Luke don't agree with whoever it is that wrote Matthew because in Luke, uh, Gabriel is speaking to Mary and in Matthew, Gabriel is speaking to um, Joseph. Anyway, um, so um, the angel comes to him and, tell, and, and told him uh, the business, told him the rundown. You can read the business in, in the script here in the, in the Christian New Testament. Feel free to do that. Now, um, in... Luke 126 is where we find out the name of the angel that whoever it is that wrote Luke came and spoke to Mary. Um, verse 21, we're gonna start at verse 21, 121. And she shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus. And I'm just gonna read everything for face value because at this point it really doesn't call, it really doesn't matter what you call this individual, this character whom the Christian New Testament puts forth as the Hebrew Messiah. For he shall, save his people from their sins. We're gonna show that that's not possible. Um, now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the master by the prophet. In, the, in here we see Lord, but in referencing the father, we're not gonna use these terms because they are um, ancient uh, Gothic and ancient German terms. We're just gonna replace those with the Hebrew names or uh, what they should be. So, um, uh, spoken of the master by the prophet saying, behold, here's the key verse here. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. Listen to the language and they, they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is Elohim with us. Okay. So what, uh, whoever it is that wrote Matthew was doing right here is mangling the scripture. He's mangling the prophecy. We're going to show that now. Um, so let's go ahead and um, also take note how Emmanuel is not the same name as Jesus, right? So they don't mean the same thing. That's a that's a total error. And let's not blow past these errors. Let's not blow past these these situations where it says in verse twenty one. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. And then in the very next, in the very next, let's skip down verse, let's skip 22 and read in verse 23, the prophecy which says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they is not accurate. They shall call his name Emmanuel. But the angel just told him to call his name Jesus. There's a problem right there that many people just blow past. This is definitely going to be longer than 10 minutes. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and go to where whoever it is that wrote Matthew was pulling from. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter seven. Isaiah chapter seven. We are going to uh, catch you up right here in, a, in an effort to keep things brief. Gonna just catch you up. So in the reign of um, Ahaz, in the reign of Ahaz, uh, king of Judah, the king of Syria, um, Rezin, and the king uh, and King Pekah 
of Israel came upon Jerusalem to attack it. So what we need to understand right brief is this. So you have Israel and the 10 Northern tribes, and then you have Judah and these, which is represented, which is representative of the Southern kingdom, right? Judah, Benjamin, Judah and Benjamin. And you had Levites throughout all the 12 tribes. So you have Judah, Benjamin and Levi who are representing the Southern kingdom. And then you have, you know, Naphtali, Reuben, um, uh, Manasseh, Ephraim, uh, all of these tribes are in the 10 northern tribes up top. All right. Well, Manasseh and Ephraim are the, the um, half tribes. But you have, you know, Dan and you have these other tribes that are representative of the t uh, of the tribes up north. OK, so and the script generally calls those calls that kingdom of Israel. Right. And then in referencing the southern kingdom, we find the kingdom of Judah. That being said, Jerusalem is like smack dab right near the center. Um, of the of the ten and of the the two and the third Levites, and so you have so you have uh, the king of Assyria, not Assyria. I apologize. The king of Syria or Aram, the uh, Arameans, which was located in modern day Syria. Um, so you have the king of Syria, uh, Rezin, and the ki and King Pekah of Israel, representing the ten the ten northern tribes, who have come upon who have made a pact and uh, come upon Jerusalem to attack it, right? So then we go on and, and, and be sure, again, read all of this for yourself, but in the effort of time, we're gonna condense all of this in cliff notes. So um, what happens is Yahuwah dispatches Isaiah to inform King Ahaz that uh, to be firm and to be calm and not to be afraid. That the plot of resin of Aram the Arameans, Syria, um, and Pekka shall not succeed. Okay. So in verse 10, Yahuwah commands, uh, a sign to be asked of Ahaz. Ahaz refuses. Let's just go ahead and read that right quick. And Yahuwah spoke further to Ahaz, ask for a sign from Yahuwah, your Elohim, uh, anywhere down to Sheol or up to the sky, but Ahaz refuses. But Ahaz refuses. I will not ask, and I will not test Yahuwah. And so then, let's skip to verse fourteen. Let's skip to verse fourteen. And so this is where it gets. This is where you find uh, whoever it is that wrote Matthew pulling from in in with that prophecy, right? He says in verse fourteen. Um, and, and, and I'm reading out of the to not the JPS. So, uh, assuredly, my master will give you a sign of his own accord. Look, the young woman is with child and about to give birth to a son. Let her name him Emmanuel. So first, and this is why I say Matthew mangled the prophecy. Let's start. Let's start from the end. Right. And work our way back. The script tells us, let her name him Emmanuel. Now, this might seem like a light thing, but Matthew, whoever wrote Matthew, says they shall call his name. Who is they? The script says her. In the script, her is making a specific reference to the reason, and this is why I believe the reason why Matthew, man whoever wrote Matthew, mangled the verse, mangled the prophecy. Because now in the script, we see, let her name him Emmanuel. Who is her? Her is the young woman. Okay. Now in the Hebrew, what we'll find is ha al alma, ha alma, right? So ha alma. First of all, ha is a definitive article. Okay, it's definitive. It's a definite article. Ha is uh, the. So when you say the in this context, let's make it a net. Let's make it an example. So. A definite article works in this way, in the same way that if I say to you, the listener, um, and we're and we're speaking of a particular book, okay? So, um, as a matter of fact, let's do it. Let's talk about the Hebrew script, okay? So when I say the book, me the speaker and you the listener know exactly which book I'm referencing. That's how a definite article works. The book. Okay, the book. It is a clear understanding 
of which book I'm speaking of when I say the book between the listener and the speaker. Now, Alma, the Hebrew word there, is never referencing any type of sexual activity. Alma should be more, it would be more properly translated as girl or young woman as it does here in the JPS because it does not convey sexual activity in the way that uh, Betula, Betula does. Betula references a virgin who has not, who has not been intimate with a man. Alma does not convey sexual activity. It does not convey sexual connotation. It does not convey sexual uh, implications. It only is in reference to a young woman. Never is it referencing a woman, young woman, who has not had intercourse with a man. It does not, just in the very same way, girl does not reference a young woman who has been intimate with a man, neither does Alma, okay? So, when we read here, as uh, assuredly my master will give you a sign of his own accord, look, the young woman, what we need to understand here is whoever the young woman is, it is a common understanding between King Ahaz, King Ahaz, and Isaiah who this woman is. All right, they know who this woman is, and this is that woman who shall name that child Emmanuel whoever that woman is. It is not making a reference, it is not making a future reference to a Messiah. This is not a messianic prophecy. This is a prophecy regarding a woman, excuse me, the woman who Isaiah and uh, uh, King Ahaz knows because of the def definite article, the, here and used in the context in which it's being used, they know who this woman is. The readers of this script do, do not know who this reader is, but they know who the reader is because he says, the young woman is with child and about to give birth to a son. Let her name him Emmanuel. Now, let's see. Um, in the same way, so now in Matthew, what we read is what Matthew, whoever wrote Matthew did was change the definite article, the, to an indefinite article, a, uh, right? A. So he says, um, a virgin. Now we don't know who that woman is. We don't know who that virgin is. We have no idea who a virgin is, who that virgin is. So it's the, in the same way, and, and let's flip this uh, analogy here, right? So if I say um, a book, a book was written, me, the speaker, might know what, what book I'm talking about, but you, the listener, has no, have no idea what book I'm speaking of. In the very same way, if I say the book was written, and we're still speaking in the same context, you know exactly the book I'm speaking of. But if I say a book was written, you have no idea what book I'm speaking of, right? This is how a definite and an indefinite article work. This is what the this is what whoever it is that whoever it is that wrote Matthew did. He changed the definite article to an indefinite article, and in and in addition to that, misrepresented the young woman being spoken of by Isaiah to. In, 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 in order to um, put forth this false doctrine. That's yeah, definitely longer than 10 minutes. Bear with me. So Christians take the Hebrew 5959, that's Alma, 5959, to again mean a version in the sense of sexual activity to fit the Christian baby Jesus narrative. However, you cannot do that because Alma does not represent sexual activity in no way, shape, form, fashion, or another. In the same way, girl does not represent uh, sexual activity, neither does Alma. Now, and if you wanted to look it up, the Hebrew word for 
uh, the Hebrew word for a virgin who has not been intimate with the man, again, Bethula is the Strong's Concordance number 1330. So now let's move on. The sign is not that the young woman will give birth, but that before the child, and let's go ahead and read that in verse 15. By the, so, um, and I'll start over with verse, verse 14. Uh, 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 excuse me. Uh, assuredly, my master will give you a sign of his own accord. Look, the young woman is with child and about to give birth to a son. I just can't hammer this in enough. That's like if you and I are talking and I say, look, the young woman, her right there. We both know who we're talking about. Not a woman, the woman. That's so important. The young woman is with child and about to give birth to a son. Let her name him Emmanuel. By the time he learns, now here, here catch this, the sign. By the time he learns to reject the bad and choose the good, people will be feeding on curds and honey. For before the lad knows to reject the bad and choose the good, the ground whose two kings you dread shall be abandoned. That's the sign. Verse 15 and 16 is the sign. Christians, what, what Christians tend to do is stop at verse 14 because that's where Matthew stops and whoever wrote Matthew, whoever it was, that's where whoever that was stops and that's it. That's the sign. This the prophecy. Virgin birth. Pause. Don't pass go. Do not pass go. Stop. Don't blow the red light. Pump your brakes. Understand understand the sign and understand what's being said here so it says by the time the by the time he learns to reject the good excuse me to reject the bad and choose the good people will be feeding on curds and honey or bird butter and honey cheese and honey you're not doing that in wartime okay you're not feeding on honey 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 is a process to create butter or to create cheese, that's a process that you are absolutely not concerned with doing in wartime. And this is by no means, this is, make no mistake, this is by, by this is in, a, in a, a, a time of assault. This is a time of dread. The king himself is afraid. This is a time of fear amongst the people. The, uh, uh, that the pact made with the king of Israel, Pekah, and the king of Syria, uh, Rezin, they are coming down to attack Jerusalem. This is a time of fear. This is not a time to kick back and, and churn some butter. This is not a time to kick back and make some cheese and process the honey from the bees. This ain't that. Now, moving on. Moving on. You see in verse 16 here that before the child is able to choose to choose from the bad to the good that the land that the two kings inhabit right syria and uh samaria which is where the the seat of israel sat the seat of the kingdom of israel sat um they will be abandoned okay so now let's go on to chapter eight because if you know, if you're rocking with me, you're already seeing that these things are not adding up with what whoever wrote Matthew said does not agree with the contextual situations and references being made to the young woman in the uh, uh, in um, the script here. And as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and before we absolutely abandon that point, let's go ahead and read what the King James Version has to say for that young woman. So 714, therefore the master himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Wow. So even in the King James version, in this English version here, it says a virgin. Now, can Alma reference a virgin? Sure. But in what context is it referencing the term virgin not in a sexual sense it's referencing a virgin 
And it, it and even it took out the definite article and says, hey, so now we don't know that the young woman is in, in the midst or in is known at the very least of the king and Isaiah. Now we have a generic young woman who's making who who is to name this child Emmanuel. Uh, not Jesus as the April as the uh, as the angel Gabriel told Joseph in the whoever wrote Matthew to name him and then in in whoever wrote Luke the same angel in the same context in the same situation told Mary to name him Jesus both of those instances we are given a different name to name that child than the, the prophecy that Matthew says is being referenced in whoever it is that wrote Matthew 1 and if I'm pricking you by saying whoever it is that I, that wrote Matthew, that's okay. The reason why it's okay is because no one knows who wrote these manuscripts. No one, no one knows who wrote these manuscripts that a billion people have decided to believe wholeheartedly in. They're not authored. So, and I, I myself was one of those billion. Um, so now let's go ahead and in chapter eight, chapter eight shows how Isaiah's wife will give birth to a son whom before he can say father and mother, the king of Assyria will fulfill the prophecy in chapter seven. Okay. What we will see here is the prophecy that the author of Matthew's gospel is using as the foundation of this virgin birth is not referring to a virgin in the sense of one who has not been who has not slept with a man is at all he mangles the set apart word to introduce a fallacy and false doctrine that becomes the basis and 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 the and the really the foundation of christian theology in 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 its entirety right so, um, and we'll just read this real quick. Chapter eight, Yahuwah, in this verse one, um, Yahuwah said to me, get yourself a large sheet and write it on and write on it in, co in a, in common script for Mahar Shalal Hashabaz and call reliable witnesses, the priest Uriah and Zechariah, son of Jabir Jabiri Chiyah Chia, 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 to forgive me that name um, to witness for me. I was intimate with the prophetess. Now this is Isaiah's wife, and she conceived and bore a son. And Yahuwah said to me, "Name him Mahar Shalal Hashabaz, for for before the boy learns to call father and mother, the wealth of Damascus, Syria." resin and the spoils of Samaria Israel um, what's his name Ramallah um, and the delights of uh, he goes on and um, and the delights of resin and the son of Ramallah excuse me Ramallah resin so and see it's okay I'm going to start back at verse four for before the boy learns to call father and mother, the wealth of Damascus and the spoils of Syria, excuse me, Samaria and the delights of resin and the son of Ramallah shall be carried off before the king of Assyria. So this is the prophecy that will be fulfilled from chapter seven. Please do read it for yourself. Now, Let's branch for a quick moment because what we've seen here so far is how those two things don't add up. What we've seen here so far is how the whoever it is that wrote Matthew uses a prophecy incorrectly, builds an entire doctrine off a false understanding of what is actually being said, whether purposefully or not purposefully, I don't know. But what I do know is what he said does not line up with what was said. That's what I do know. Now, as a caveat, if you believe, because there are some that do, that Joseph is the biological father of Jesus, 
then Jesus is a man as any other man subject to sin and then not qualified to be the sinless sacrifice. Let's go ahead and read in the Christian New Testament, Romans 5, Romans 5 in the Christian New Testament, Romans 5, verse 12. And I'm just gonna, this is basically just to prove the, 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 the point that I just made. And the, this is a precept to prove the point that I just made. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. We're gonna dive into when things don't add up part two. Um, and how Paul will have folk clean, sent clean off in, under, in, in believing that you cannot, that there is no justification in the law, that man cannot be just in the law. In one verse, he says that uh, he says that man can't be just in the law. And then in another verse, uh, we find in uh, whoever it is that wrote uh, Luke, man is just in, in the law. So we'll get into that at a later time. But to keep this brief, um, understand that whoever it is that wrote Matthew, you have to be careful because that individual, this is just one verse, one prophecy. There are many where throughout the entire, throughout the entirety of the Christian New Testament, where prophecies in the Hebrew script are misrepresented, misquoted, um, in an effort to put forth a false agenda, whether ignorantly or purposefully, I can't tell, I don't know. But what I do know is that the core foundation of a virgin birth, which is the stalk, which is the tree, the tree that the branches of Christianity sit on or, uh, uh, or attached to rather, it's fallacious, it's fallacy, it's wrong, it's incorrect, it's not true. I encourage you, I implore you to stop believing in the lies of men. Shalom.